let's show a, an easy way of looking for um, outliers within your data. So um, you really do want to look at all your data points individually and within the columns, so within the variable, um, and sort of scrutinize each one the best of your ability. But you need to have a starting point of way of doing this. Um, looking at the minimum and maximum values can be helpful, but it's um, not very objective. And especially if you're looking at numbers that are fairly abstract and you're not as familiar with uh, yet, um, it might not be all that helpful. So what we can do is calculate um, how far away from the average the minimum and maximum values are and use that to help us determine if there is potentially an outlier, whether it's an outlier because there's some sort of typo or error in the database, or it can be a physiological outlier where it's real data, but the person was just a little atypical. So in a small data set, one atypical person can really throw off the whole data set. So they might be somebody you might want to consider um, not using within your data. Um, of course, there's, there's a lot of uh, sort of should I or shouldn't I not throw out um, outliers. It's going to come up to you and your biostatistician and to determine if that's something you should do or not. Um, so, but let's go ahead and show how we can identify potential outliers this way. Um, so, I'm going to insert a row here um, in our full data set um, area of our statistics, and let's type in outliers. All right, so. Um, this is going to be a formula that I'm going to have you go to the description of this video, copy the formula, and paste it in just like I am doing. And I'll show you then how to modify it to fit your, your spreadsheet. So I've already copied it, so I'm going to go and just paste it right where I want it. And it's this big long if statement with lots of different things in it. And so in this, we are going to replace the um, variables that are... Um, within brackets with whatever that uh, whatever it says within the bracket. So for instance here we have within this set of brackets we have the word max. So we want to remove that. So get rid of the brackets and the word and I'm going to click where the maximum variable or the maximum value is in this data set. So in the peak diameter, the maximum variable or the maximum data was calculated right here, so it's 0 0.528. So I'm going to click that all right, so the next uh, one is where it says average. So again, I'm going to get rid of the bracket and the word average in the opening bracket, and I'm going to click where the average is. I'm going to do it again for the standard deviation. So what this is actually going to be doing is going to, it's going to be calculating three standard deviations above and below the average. And then it's going to look and see if your minimum and maximum values are beyond that. Um, you can change this number three here. Um, you would also have to change it right here and change it right here um, to another number. So you can do two standard deviations. So you just change those threes into twos. You can do four standard deviations by changing the threes to fours, however you want to do that. Um, three is fairly standard. A lot of people use three standard deviations. So, but let's remove again the, the bracket, the SD, which stands for standard deviation, and we'll click right here where our standard deviation is. Um, here's another, here's a minimum. So get, let's get rid of that. Click where the minimum is, and we're gonna be doing this a, a handful of times. All right, so this seems like a lot of work, but I promise you doing it this way is much easier than typing the um, entire formula in from scratch, um, which is what I had to do initially when I sort of made this. Um, let's get rid of the standard deviation uh, in, or the, the abbreviation for it and put in the actual standard deviation. Here's a max. Get rid of that. Here's our maximum values right here. Our average. Get rid of the bracket in the word. Average is right here. And we have to do this several times. So standard deviation. Minimum. Average here. Standard deviation. And I think we got them all now. So I can hit enter and it's going to tell me 
No, there are no um, outliers in this data set based on the averages, the standard deviations, and how far away from the average the minimum and maximum value is. Again, it went three standard deviations above, so the average plus three standard deviations above was the maximum value above that? No, okay. Then also average minus three standard deviations below was the minimum value here below that? No, so we don't have a, an outlier above or below. So right now it doesn't say that there's an outlier because there isn't one, statistically speaking, based on you know this justification at least. Um, but let's force an outlier um, just so you can see what that would look like. So highest number here is 0 0.528. Let's go up here and put a, a 100 in. All right, so let's, uh, I'm gonna override this data here and say I had a typo and I accidentally put 100 there instead of the 0 0.447 that was there. It's now going to warn me that there's an outlier. So it says, yes, there's an outlier and it's high. Um, look at your maximum value here. It's 100. Hopefully you know a little bit about the data set and you know 100 is way too high. So you go and you look for that 100 and then you go and investigate it and determine what's going on. Whether it's a typo, maybe hopefully you have the data in some other um, place somewhere so you can go back and find out if it's a typo of some sort and you can correct that. Um, let's say that there's also a low high um, uh, outlier. So the lowest value right now is 0 0.267. Let's go to this one up here and let's you know let's put a negative value so we know it's going to give me an outlier. So we'll say negative you know, we'll say negative 100. Now it says yes, there's an outlier and it's both, right? Because we have a high outlier and a low outlier. We have two values at least, at least two values that are well outside of the expected values of within three standard deviations from the average. Um, so you can see that the minimum is negative 100. You know that there can't be negative values in this uh, variable. So you go and you find that. And then again, you go and try to figure out why it's there. Hopefully it was a typo and you can correct it um, with the original data set. So let's get rid of both of those. Um, I just hit control Z twice to undo both of those you know, fake numbers I just put in there. Um, and just so you can see if, it, if it's just a low outlier, let's do that one more time. So negative 100. And it says yes, low, telling me there is an outlier and it's a low outlier. So go look at your minimum, find that, and go figure out why it's there. All right, so I'm going to hit Control Z again to undo that because I don't want that in my data set. All right, so let's copy this across. And it will then do that automatically for every column of data we have. All right, so you can see how you can very easily um, look for outliers. It's not a perfect system. It's not going to find every outlier in you know, what is and is not an outlier. It has some subjectivity to it, but this gives you an objective upfront um, decision you can make for identifying potential outliers that you should at least go and investigate to see if it's an accurate number or if there was some sort of error that was put into the, the spreadsheet that you should correct. So now that you're pretty sure you have a clean data set, you can start actually doing some comparisons between the groups. Um, so in this case, between those with and without a family history of hypertension. So on the next uh, video, I'll be showing you how to do a very simple comparison uh, using a t-test function within Excel.